guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Gladi Gala and it is by Taito Games. It plays two to four players, takes about 40 to 60 minutes, and is for ages 10 and up and it is in the, the uh, NSYNC series. In Gladi Gala, you're basically going to be playing in a tactical arena based combat. It is a Colosseum game based on the Roman era in which you're going to get to choose different characters to place on the board and move around. Now in this game, much like the game uh, that was recently released by them, uh, Stone Days, in which you're going to basically be placing your characters down and moving them around on a board, you'll be utilizing the board that is actually metallic and you'll be placing down magnets on this board based on where you want to move. You can move up, down, left, or right, or you can move uh, in the diagonal spaces provided your character hasn't been damaged. Different characters do different things and have different abilities and have different attack ranges in the game and you're going to be basically just selecting your movement and selecting your abilities then you're going to be placing down attacks and then moving and if you land in those attacks you'll be taking damage. Players will win by either bringing these little these little tokens to the middle of the board thusly ending the game or when five characters are defeated on the board. There's two rounds of gameplay and after the second round you'll determine who wins based on the different ways you can win the game and that is the basic idea of the game anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the board and everything brought to you down below with gladi gala by taito games so here we have gladi gala and everything included in the game and as you can see there's four different players you can choose from they have different names this one is leo over here and then you've got over here is oh let's see if i can pronounce that Academia, and then there's two other ones, of course, as well. You're going to be getting these cheer tokens along with your little board here, which are going to be used later in the game. You'll also be getting these tokens in which players are going to be picking before the beginning of the game to determine who's going to be taking damage or losing characters first. You're also going to get this little token, which is going to be your token that you're going to try and uh, protect as best you can and not get it to move to the middle of the board because if that happens, somebody else is going to win that isn't you. You'll also get your characters. I imagine they'll be minutes but in this case I have little standee characters, four different colors. I've got blue, I've got green, orange, and black here. And you're also going to get these little damage markers. There's going to be a one, two, and a three side depending on the tokens. And you'll be using those to drop them on the board much like Stone Days to damage characters before you move. You're also going to get these little boards over here that are going to have basically a little square grid which is going to have an up, down, left, right, and then of course diagonals in which you're going to be taking these little things here that are magnet magnets and you're going to be placing in the middle to not move, up to go up, down to go down, left and right, based on where you're facing on the board. You're going to be getting these guys from a semi-draft in the game, in which you're going to be trying to pick the best ones you possibly can. Well, it's, it's, it's basically random, actually. Uh, you're also going to have these damage markers here that you place underneath your characters. When you take damage after the second one, you're out of the game with that character, and you have a certain number of characters depending on the number of players in the game. There's also currency, which is ranked from 1 to 5 to 10, and you're also going to be getting this big board here and this little middle section here which is going to indicate the characters that have passed on in the Colosseum of the Roman arena. That's pretty much what you're getting in the game. Quite a lot of stuff for what it is included. Let's go ahead and take it down below and I'll show you a two or three player game, explain how a round works necessarily, and then I will tell you what I think of the game Gladi Gala. So here we have Gladi Gala set up for four players actually and everything is all ready to go. I'll explain setup now just so you get an idea of how it works but because it's such a big game I wasn't able to give you a good top-down shot. Hopefully we'll be able to give you some images as to how it all looks. But once you pick a character or a, a, a type, or you got Academia or uh, this guy over here is Leo or so on and so forth, pick one of these boards, you're also going to get a treasury board and it's going to come with three dollars or Roman doubloons or whatever they're called to start the game off with. There's ones, fives, and tens where that's where you put all your money. Your player board is also going to have your characters as to how they're going to hit. So basically uh, the spearmen are going to have a range that has a little plus. The uh, gladiators will be able to swing kind of in a circle along with being able to hit up ahead of them. It just tells you on the board how that works. Down below is like your betting, which is going to happen at the beginning of the game. And then, of course, you've got your applause meters. There's going to be two thumbs up and a thumbs down, which I'll explain in a second here. Every single player is going to start with three characters on a four-player game, but it's different depending on the number of players, as well as setup is a little different as well. To begin the game, after you've chosen your characters, given yourself three, you're going to pick two one uh 
gladiators. And on the back of these guys here, we'll show if it's a one or a two. This one's a two because it has a Roman numeral of two. The other ones are one. You just take two ones and a two. Now it's different in a three and a two player game, but after you've done that, you've all received your uh, two ones and a two. You've got your three characters. Set all of your magnets in the center portion of the hex on top, as well as on the one magnet on the bottom left area, which is basically do nothing. So you should have two magnets on each of the characters. After you've done that, you're then going to go ahead and draft these guys out. Based on the number of players, you can have all of these out. And players in turn order are going to be able to select any amount, uh, any, any uh, different types of tokens here up to three. So if I were to go first, I would be able to select any of them that are not blue. And I could select three in, 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 in any uh, combination I want. So I can take two Leo and a Solus or one uh, Spiritus, one Solus and a Leo. As long as I get three, then you're going to go ahead and place them down on your board, which represents the characters you are trying to defeat. And whenever a character of that type is defeated, you'll be able to remove one of these tokens, which will eventually give you more gold as the game progresses which you need to win the game. Everybody will do that up until the point where they have all of their, all, all three covered. And then after that, you're going to do it two more times. And as you can see here, there's five different locations and obviously you can never choose your own. So you gotta decide how you want to do that. So now we've got three of the five selected. Blue's gonna select two. Maybe it's gonna be Leo again. So he's head hunting for Leo. Uh, Leo is gonna go for Solus. And uh, Solus is going to go for Spiritus. And then Spiritus is going to take the Academia. Then the rest of these guys are going to get removed. So you now have a board that has all five. So when these things get removed, you're just going to start getting coins. Uh, two of five of these guys removed is two coins. Three is three, four is four, so on and so forth. Collecting them as players are eliminated from the battlefield. Uh, then after you have done that, you're going to do setup and you're going to take your little token here and set it down where it tells you. Normally it's going to be in a four player game in each of these quadrants, putting it there. Uh, you're then going to select a character and put it, put one behind this. So everybody's going to have one behind. And then you're going to have the ability to place all of the characters in the back row adjacent and one character on either side of this little uh, eagle or token. After that, everybody has to have their character set up. Now, it's, of course, different for the different amount of players in the game. Then, you make sure that your boards are all set up. You have your numbered damage markers, and generally, it's going to be a one or a two. Two is going to be for the uh, two type. So, in this case, the assassin here is a two, so he's got a two damage marker. And everybody else is a one. You're just going to flip them, uh, depending on the characters. And so, everybody will have those as well. After that, that's pretty much the setup. Everybody's ready to go, making sure they have the little standees. Now the characters have a front and a back, but for this prototype, I just went ahead and made a black marker for the front of the base, but I'm imagining there'll probably be some kind of units that will either be miniatures or something that will designate which way is front, because these characters can go left or right, as well as turn basically all the way around to a 180, if needed during the game. Everybody now is going to take their boards and they're going to select how they want their characters to move. And it's gonna be based on the way you are facing. So if I am facing this way, then I'm gonna be looking at the board backwards for you, but I'm gonna be moving this up, which will always be forward. If I move it left, it will always be left. And if I move it right, it'll always be right. Based on not where he's facing, but where the board is. So in relation to the board. The bottom of these little guys here are going to have a left, a right, and of course being able to turn around. So you'll also be able to do that as well and it doesn't matter in what order you do these things in because you're still moving in relation to the board not the character additionally you're instead of placing uh, moving it left or right or uh, 180 you can use the ability every ability is going to cost one token and you're going to have to place it on the uh, little markers indicated for shields or whatnot. This character here is able to actually move twice in the direction if as long as you spend two. Other characters will have shields, meaning that you are not gonna be able to damage that character. However, you still get points if you do hit them. And then of course there's upgrade spots on the boards here, which allow a player who is damaged, who normally can't move diagonally when they're damaged, to be able to move diagonally. Now they still have that damage, so it is somewhat healing, so it doesn't completely ruin them. But at the same time, after two hits, you're done for. So after everybody is placed, everybody is then going to go ahead and move. So everybody will have placed, flipped them face down so nobody can see. Um, before, before movement begins, you're going to take your little tokens here and place them on the board based on relation to your character's damaging abilities. So it, for instance, uh, the spear guy will not be able to hit in front of him, but will be able to hit in a plus sign after that. So in this case, this spearman has to skip one space and then they have a plus sign here so they can hit anywhere here that they want. So you'll be placing out your tokens indicated on the uh, locations there. 
And uh, then after that, everybody will move based on the board, just like in the game Stone Days. You're gonna move your characters. And if you move your character into a, well, I, these are backwards, the colors are all backwards, but I think you get the idea anyway. If you move your character onto a space that has somebody else's damage, you're going to take a damage and place one of these guys on there. When you get two damage, you're then done for. You're going to lose your character and place them there, indicating that there's one character that has died. Depending on the number of players in the game is how many characters are going to die in the game and thusly end the round. And another way to end the round is something to walk onto another player's space, it occupies their little eagle, and then move that eagle into the middle. The middle of the board also has an interesting aspect where if you go in the middle, it'll cost you a coin. And if you stay there, it'll cost you a coin. Additionally, uh, you cannot do damage in the coin, in, sorry, in the middle, and you also cannot uh, take damage in the middle as well. So it's kind of a safe space, provided you're willing to spend the coins. It's very useful. Once a player can either defeat, once a number of play, a number of characters have been defeated, the round will end, or if somebody gets one other character's eagle into the middle, the round will end as well. And there's two rounds in the game. You're going to also tally up at the end of the round. So if I actually got this character, brought this thing back, then we're gonna tally up points. And if I have two more coins than the second player, I'm going to take the scoring victory markers, which are these guys here, place them in the first round, and based on the number of coins I have more than the second place player, I'll place it on here. The second round will then begin, and if I claim another victory, I win, or if somebody else claims the victory but doesn't have more coins than me, I also win. However, if they do have more, then that means their victory was better than mine and they can win. So even if you've lost the first round, there's still an easy way for you to come back in the game, provided you do a little bit better this time. So. It has that different uh, aspect of the game. There's the two different ways to win, but both ways are viable for each round in order for you to win based on getting coins in the game. That's pretty much the idea of the game. It's a tactical game in which you're gonna be moving and using these magnets, hiding them, flipping them over, moving and hoping you don't walk into somebody's trap, and then rinse and repeating the game. Playing those two rounds, whoever has the better victory or both victories is the winner of the game, Gladi Gala. All right, let's come up and talk about the game. And I'll give you my full review of it. So that's the basic idea of how to play the game Gladi Gala. But there is a few caveats that I wanted to mention. And the first one was the one I was precluding to, which are these little applause tokens, little small guys here. You'll have two thumbs up and one thumb down. Before movement and damaging effect takes effect, you're going to take these tokens if you want one token and place it in any row on the board. And then you're going to resolve it after you've moved. If it's a thumb up, every time you hit somebody with a token in that row, it's gonna give you an extra coin. If it's a thumb down, whenever somebody hits you, they're going to lose a coin. So there is basically ways you can kind of mitigate coin gaining. Now the damage still takes place, so you have to be aware of that. But if you want, you can use those three. Now, every round it refreshes and you'll get those three tokens back, so you'll have a total of six times you can use it throughout the game. Also, let's talk about the characters. For instance, this one here is the Spear Girl. She obviously can't hit in front of her, but she can do a plus sign after that, and that is a really long range attack. It can shoot four spaces in front of her. And like Stone Days, there are characters that kind of have that archer ability, so getting close to these characters as much as possible is going to stop them. In addition, when characters are turned left or right, you'll have to realize that they can only attack in certain areas so you know which areas they have the potential to attack in so there is a little bit of a chicken or cat and mouse if you will me moving my character up may put myself in the line of fire but the player might think maybe he's gonna be more defensive and not go straight for the spot I would think he's going to go in in which case maybe you can avoid taking damage and also getting closer to those ranged characters there's also going to be this guy here this is like the main gladiator style he has a defendability and so does the uh, spear girl she is she and he both can use their ability for one single coin and every ability costs a coin. And if they do, they can prevent damage from them themselves. However, players will still gain coins for hitting them and coins that they gain are based on the characters. Certain characters, like for instance, the assassin will do one, one coin worth of damage or one damage and get one coin. But the big Brutus like the large guy, which is uh, this guy over here, he's actually going to gain three when he hits you. In addition, his ability is if he spends a coin and he hits somebody, they die. So he's really, really strong. And then the final one is this little assassin girl. She will be able to move two spaces in the space that you, in the, in the direction that you indicated if you use her ability. And to use the ability, she's gonna move them on these little boards here. It's nice and easy how they work. And it's magnetized as well. Uh, this is a nice little uh, copy of the prototype, but uh, just to give you an idea of how it kind of works, that's what you're gonna be doing. Now, let's talk about the critiques and all the positives. First is quality of components. Really, really, really good. As you can see, this is a prototype, but it looks 
really great. The only thing I want to say is I hope they do miniatures for the game or a way that shows the frontal base. As I showed you before, I have little dots on these guys to indicate which way is front, which way is back. That way I know which way they are always facing. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm sure they will. Um, another thing is that all of the different magnetized little boards here and whatnot are really fun. However, hopefully they have a little bit slightly better quality with these as well, or at least the magnets, because when you put them down and then you flip them over, sometimes the magnets fall off or they can move. So you have to be careful when placing those guys there. But like I said, it's a prototype, so it's most likely going to be better. And hopefully these uh, critiques are going to be solved with the finishing of the game. Um, otherwise, though, everything else is really great. The boards are really nice. The components are very nice. It's nice and thick. This is a, one of the higher quality prototypes I have had. The quality of the theme attached to the mechanics works really well. It is a Colosseum-based combat game featured in Rome, and it feels like that. You feel like you're tactically moving around the board. You have to avoid those, those, air, those dudes that are throwing stuff. You have to get in really close. As an assassin, assassins are also really quick. Every character has the same amount of life, which is nice. The only one critique would I have about that the, is the fact that instead of drafting the characters, which is what I would definitely prefer, you're going to be just taking them randomly. So you may have no ranged characters when you pull, and, and you might be dealing with four or even five of them against other players, and that can, that can happen, unfortunately. I'd, so I'd like to actually see the drafting aspect take place. But otherwise, it works really great as far as movement con is concerned, and every time you get hit, it's kind of your fault because you moved into that. You could have avoided it by simply not doing that thing, but you're always taking risks in this game. And just like Stone Days, risks is part of the game. Another really nice thing about this game is the betting system mechanics in which every single round you're going to be betting on who you want to kind of defeat or who you want or who is going to be, be defeated first. So who do you think is gonna be the more aggressive player or who do you wanna go after based on who was first last round? That will give you the option and thus they score you more victory points or coins throughout the game that you can either use for abilities or save for the end to hopefully gain the most coins along with the victory. There is another thing on top of this game. If you win the first round, there is still a way that other players can easily beat you the next round. If you won by a slim margin and somebody beats uh, beats the next round with a higher margin, they win because they put in way more effort than you did the first round. Maybe you bought, got by by the skin of your teeth. You still got a little victory. Now, if it's a tie, both players win, but it's probably very unlikely that's going to happen. I love the theme to this game. It feels great as, as you're playing it. I like the tactical nature and I really enjoyed this game. This is better in my opinion than Stone Days. The one thing I really enjoyed about Stone Days was they had the little, uh, they, they had little obstacles as you moved around on them and certain ones I think you can move on top of or whatnot, but in general, you're like lobbing things over. This one doesn't have any of that involved in the game. There's no like different spaces you're gonna be placing obstacles down other than the middle of the board, which you can't attack in, can't attack out of. Uh, it can't be damaged in. It costs a coin to stay and it costs a coin to move into. Otherwise, though, it's just a tactical board map placement. Another thing to note is in a two-player game, it's basically who can hit the other player harder first for the bidding. So the bidding is kind of taken out, which is too bad. But in a four-player game is where this shines. Three and four players is definitely where you want to play this game, in my opinion, because it adds that betting aspect of the game and it gives opportunity for every single player to win. This is definitely made, in my opinion, for multiplayer, whereas Stone Days is either for two or four players because you can play as teams. Overall, this is a very good game. I think if you like Stone Days, you're going to really enjoy this one as well. In fact, I will even say that you will enjoy it more, provided you like a more tactical experience. For those of you who don't like the fact that you're moving the, the little things, the hidden placement and whatnot, flipping them over, maybe the, the risk versus reward aspect of this game, it might not be for you. And this the little the little critiques I had about I'd rather see characters being drafted as opposed to the characters just given to you randomly that kind of takes away from the ability of choosing my Roman warriors that I would like to do. But otherwise, a really, really solid game. Taito Games did another great game. I really enjoy these, and I think this mechanic is very, very, very unique. I think that's why it's called the NSYNC series, because basically this is the only one where we're actually using the, med, uh, the metal magnets or whatever on these boards here, and it has like that hidden placement in which you reveal, and then the tactical aspects go through. And I love it when games add new mechanics and new stylized aspects to their games. Well done, 
definitely check out the game Gladi Gala on Kickstarter if this one is for you down below in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. And all this help, and we do greatly appreciate it. Subscribe, click that notification bell button. It helps as well. And it notifies you when we're going to release new content for new Kickstarter games. We're always releasing new content almost every single day. Last thing I didn't forget to, I, want, I forgot to note, is the artwork of this game. It's great. I love this cartoony Roman style artwork. Uh, that is that probably one of my favorite parts about this game, so I cannot believe I forgot to mention it. But the feel of vivid imagery on this game is fantastic, and I even want to see even more of it on the board, even though it's probably kind of hard when you have a Roman dirt coliseum. But nevertheless, super cool, cute, cute imagery, and uh, definitely good for families. It's not very, it's not a very brutal game, even though you're fighting a war in the coliseum. It's not bloody or anything like that. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Currently giving away the game Dogs right now, a uh, Kickstarter game from Grey Mask Games. It's an excellent little game. I think you guys will greatly enjoy it. And don't forget to check out our live streams every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST on our Facebook page, Unfiltered Gamer. We're giving away games on there as well, and we're showing you all the latest and greatest Kickstarter games either coming out, just came out, and sometimes we'll do a couple other bonus streams. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I look forward to battling in the Roman Colosseum with you next time.